Hey, this is Paul Wonky from Dead Original, and you're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. Hey, you're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. I'm Bruce. And I'm Chris. Yahoo! <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> today we've got <laughs> today we've got Dead Original Paul Wanky. I'm hoping I'm probably butchering that. Many of my our listeners here probably know him from uh, Trivium. He's a drummer of Trivium as well. And we're gonna go ahead and get him on the line and see where we end up. Hey, Paul, meet Chris, my partner. Nice to meet you. Hello. Hey, hey, how's it going? Good, man. How are you doing? Good, man. Right on. Where are you at today? You in you in Chicago? Yeah, yeah, I'm in Chicago. Is that home? Is that home base for you? Yep. So anyway, <laughs> our listeners probably know you from Trivium as the uh, the guy behind the drums in Trivium. But tell us about the Dead Original. It's a uh, it's a project I've been working on for years. Uh, I'm the front man for it and kind of like you know the visionary for the music. And uh, yeah, it's like tapping into old school sounds, you know, just guitar, drums, and vocals, you know, no backing tracks. Uh, Interesting. You know, just, I know there's like a lot of bands out there using tracks. So, oh yeah. I don't think I've seen a show in the last five or six years without tracks. Yeah, exactly. You know, and uh, that's, that's kind of like, I'm a big fan of the nineties. So I'm taking elements of that and using it for dead original that's kind of how i came up with the name you know it's like man all the all the greats are dying and shit you know yeah yeah <laughs> right <laughs> so it's kind of what it is you know so so what yeah, is it man. what is it like taking the step from being essentially hidden behind the drums to actually being you know the center of attention out in front of the microphone it's different man you know uh i like it <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> now I know why Dave Grohl did it, you know. Nice. Right, but is it did, did you find it unnerving when you first got out there? Well, it's it's more it's more nerving about the business side of things, managing things, putting things together. That's the most stressful. It's like, dude, are they going to show up? Am I like are people going to like this? <laughs> right. <laughs> when you, when you're the drummer, you know, obviously there's drummers that are like assets to the band like there's vinnie paul panther uh, he was a you know, visionary with, with dimebag or or right. D- danny carey from tool he pro- propels the band but if you're, if you're one of those drummers which 90 percent of the time it is where you sit back and i was one of those guys i always be like cool man i'm gonna drink some beer when you guys are done with the song i'm gonna go in and record you know it's like, <laughs> right so i now it's like well i want to be that guy that that, that writes the song so here's the demo here, you know, check it out. Let's play this live. That, that's more stressful, I think. Going on stage and just playing and singing, that, to me, that's that's the best part, you know. Um, but it's the business side of things, you know. It's like getting everything together. That's stressful. You know? Right, yeah. Making sure everyone <laughs> shows up on time. You know, yeah, su- it's suddenly, like- suddenly you remember every single time you were late and why people were mad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Well, now... Now I'm like, man, should I go back to playing drums? <laughs> right. <laughs> I know when yeah, I went. Awesome. I know when I went from playing bass to singing, I was just like, "Fuck, I was an asshole." <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I'd show up late That's and funny. get wasted, whatever. But when you're yeah. when you're when you're taking charge and that happens, you're like, "Fuck, I got to deal with the manager. I got to deal with this. I got to deal with all this yeah. other shit." Yeah, you gotta you gotta think before he speaks, so you don't sound like a dick. It's like, well, could you play that part better? Because you suck. It's like, no, you gotta say like, <laughs> yeah. you know, think of the color red, man. I don't know. You know, you know, you know it's that's oh, yeah. that's that's the stressful part. So that's so, cool. Do you find it <laughs> difficult, like from playing massive festivals like uh, Trivium played or or any of the bands you've been in before, to now taking this into playing? I'm assuming smaller, more intimate venues. Oh yeah, dude. Well, number one, it just sucked in general. Like leaving that, it's like everything was like handed to me, and then I had to start over again. Right. You know. Yeah. So, I, so I actually, I launched two bands, and now I'm just focusing on Dead Original because it's just a three piece. 
And it's more exciting because it's like ignorance, bliss, you know. When it comes to playing drums, like I'm pretty methodical with it all. But right now, I'm, I'm just having fun, enjoying the writing process, and you know, right, kind of leading the way for the band. I'm like, all right, guys, we're gonna play in this town. Blah blah blah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know. So, so for people that haven't heard you, like I wanted to check you out today, but all your videos say not available in my country. So, um. I'm not sure why that is, so I couldn't check out the band. So how would you describe the band to me? Oh, well, we could we could send you the music, man. Oh, uh, we okay. So here's what happened. Um, we were independent. Uh, we've supported like Caesar, Jonathan Davis, ten years, and then finally we landed like a management deal. So now uh, we're with De- now we're with Dennis Sanders. He worked with Papa Roach. Oh, cool. Uh, and uh, we're actually going to go on tour with Candlebox in November. Oh, nice. So we're like we're like nineties ish, but I like love it. with, well, well, but with modern, it's like uh, some people are saying it's like Nirvana and Alice in Chains had a baby, but <laughs> nice, <laughs> but but like we're too lower, yeah. and production production wise, it's like a hybrid. It's not totally overproduced like a lot of bands are. I don't think. Well, that's good. And I see that you're calling it like uh, the newer grunge or something. So that's kind of perfect what you're going for, right? Well, I get messages from kids sometimes like, dude, you're going to bring back grunge. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> you know the, my favorite grunge bands were offended by that term when it came out. But it's like, dude, it's like almost 2020. It's like, I'll I'll ride that. I don't care. Yeah, it's 30, <laughs> oh, sure. It's 30 years <laughs> later. Can you believe that? Yeah, like, yeah that's crazy. It's, it's insane. I was in high school when I first heard Nevermind. And it was like the <laughs> loudest fucking cassette tape I'd ever purchased. I threw it in. I threw it in my truck. I was like, it just about blew up the speakers, you know, because yeah. it was mastered so fucking loud. Now, when you take those old CDs or or cassettes and you put them, it's just so quiet comparatively speaking. Yeah, everything's oh, yeah. smashed. I've been yeah. I've been stuck because of songwriting side. So I've been studying production, and it's like yeah. The Nevermind album was at like negative sixteen LUF S, and now yeah. it's. Spotify is negative 14, but before LUFS standard, people were smashing it to like negative eight, negative seven. Well, they, some, is, some of the, some of the EDM records are at minus four. It's, yeah, that's it's crazy. unbelievable. It's just smashed and like, yeah. and you can hear it, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. cr- it's crunchy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think the it works, of... it works ahead. for fake, it works with like, you know, fake drum sounds and, whatever you know but. yeah so are you the uh are you the uh, primary songwriter or do you guys all write together or how does that work out we right now it is and i, and I think the band's kind of weird about it because we're doing a release and now we're now we're re-releasing it that's why those videos aren't working because we, ah. we, we had to pull everything out because uh you know we, we independently released it and then, like nothing really happened so now we got Dennis and uh, I think we're doing it right this time. We got cool. a, we're getting we're getting a radio guy and we've got a PR lady that I actually know from ten years ago. Her name's Shauna O'Donnell. Oh good yeah, friend good friend of mine as well. I've been working <laughs> with Shauna for fifteen years. Yeah, so it's cool, man. Yeah, <laughs> That's awesome. Stuff. She's all right. Good people. Yeah. Do you have plans to take this out on the road? Yeah, man. We're going on tour with Candlebox in November. Nice. Oh, so nice. Uh, like a, a worldwide tour. I mean, a statewide tour. It's or mid. It, it, they're just Midwest states, so kind of locked out because probably no East Coast or West Coast band could could go on tour in the Midwest randomly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, so please enlighten me because I'm kind of new to the U.S. What is the Midwest? Jesus, it's in, it's between the East and West. <laughs> <laughs> but why do they Thank call you. it the Midwest? That's what I don't understand. So like, I don't know, man. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Paul. He's challenged. So, so I am challenged. I, I moved here from Canada about a year and a half ago, so I'm still learning. I'm still it's all learning good. the U.S. It's all good, man. I'm uh, I'm on Wikipedia now. The Midwestern United States also <laughs> <laughs> is one of the four regions. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, I don't know why it's called Midwest. It should be called Middle, right? Yeah. Right. Anyway, why not, why not Mid East? 
Maybe it's West. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe they thought they were being clever when they said, well, West and East, they both end in ST. So if we say West, we're combining yeah. West and East. I don't yeah. fucking know. I'm I'm fucking <laughs> rambling now. <laughs> Sorry, we're yeah. digressing. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool, man. Yep. But for the project, yeah, I have plans to, to go on tour with it. Um, obviously, we are in November. Uh, it's it's easy to to it's just you know it's brand new bands. There's three guys. I think it's easier to, to put a band together, three dudes, than it is like five people or something. Oh yeah. Know? Oh absolutely. god, yeah. So that's why I just kind of put my other band on on a waiting list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is so. Is um. Shoot, I just lost my train of thought. So you said uh, it's unsigned at the moment. Are you guys shopping a, a deal or? Uh, Dennis might be doing stuff, but right now we're just we're just rolling out independent. You know. Um. So it's cool. I mean, we're doing. I mean, we get we're gonna go on tour. Candlebox. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you can't beat that. <laughs> what do you need a record deal for if that's what's happening? I guess yeah. so. Labels are dying, man. It's yeah, like, you're I, you I are 100 percent right. I can just go get a loan, you know. And, you right. Know, I'm do, and, I'm doing it right now. I'm gonna go buy a van with you know with a loan I got. So who cares? Yeah. And you own your masters at the end of the day. Yeah, I own the masters. I own the trademark. That was just you know a couple hundred bucks. I didn't right. get. I didn't even get a lawyer. I just Googled all the shit. You know. <laughs> Isn't <laughs> Google beautiful. University amazing? <laughs> it's crazy. Google University. That's crazy, it. man. Yeah, I'm learning. I'm learning C plus plus right now through Google <laughs> University. It's mind numbing. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, it is. Chris, yo, Chris, what? got anything? Oh, <laughs> <Are you>? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sometimes we get a little off the rails here. Yeah, um, no, that's that's cool, man. Are you playing and singing, or are you playing guitar and singing at the same time, or? Yeah, yeah, I play guitar and sing, man. Okay, and and who's playing bass for you? His name's Sean McCole, and he's he's a good songwriter himself. He's writing like these pop tunes, pretty funny. He actually asked if we could play one of them live. I'm like, dude, this is against what we're doing, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> um, no, like we've written about three songs together, so maybe like the next album, uh, probably do stuff together. But right now, it's like I, I wrote it all, I tracked it all. I just had uh, a couple of professional mixers mix the music. So, did you track it at your house or? No, I got a studio in the city. Okay. Uh, you know, so. Now, is it your studio? Yeah. Oh, really? What are you running yeah. in there? You got Pro Tools in there or Logic, Cubase? What are you running? I use I use Logic. Okay. So, cool. Yeah. That's not like. A million dollar studio, man. It's got a, a Personas board. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Personas is cool. You know. Yeah. I mean, I mix in here every day. I love it. It's treated well, but it's not. Uh, it's nothing fancy. Yeah. <laughs> but it works I like think, a charm. I, I I think with you know the way things are being mixed these days, you can get away with that. You know, I talked to uh, Dennis and I was like, "Hey, dude, what did what did Papa Roach spend? Because I I spent about you know, maybe 20 grand for this album. And he's like, oh, I spent like $400,000 to make. Uh, wow. That's like old school stuff. Yeah. It's a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. That was back when you had to record a tape. And yeah. Then, and then fly into Pro Tools for editing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, thanks. That's when and record companies had budgets. Mm-hmm. And the band, actually, the band actually had to rehearse and do prep work together. <laughs> The fucking travesty of pre-production. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Pre-production um, now just turns into final final masters. Yeah. How how are you finding um fans of Trivium? Are they taking to this? Or is it something a separate fan base? I guess it's kinda of, yeah, it's separate fan base and it's it's kind of dwindling away. I only played with them for about a couple of years. So Right. Yeah. You know, it's uh this is what it is. I just kind of use it as a stamp to get into other things, you know. I think it's helped helped uh, Dead Original get into, obviously, get you know, get on a tour or right. uh, any other shows we've done. You know? Nice. So, I can't wait to hear the tunes. I'm like, 
I'm a huge '90s grunge fan. I want yeah, to. That, like, that's right up your alley. I want to hear this, man. Mm-hmm. I have a Pandora playlist, a Pandora radio station, like alternative '90s, and it's always on. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> nice, man. So after uh, Candlebox, you guys got anything else planned, or are you still uh, still in the works? We're still in the works, man. So. But you're hoping to take this out to the masses. Yeah, man. I'm excited. Excellent. So. What um on the side, you keep pretty busy with your endorsements and a whole bunch of other things as well, right? Yeah. I mean, this is not the only thing you've got going on. You've got all kinds of uh, side projects, don't you? Yeah, I mean, with like my studio, uh, I got a couple of bands right now having me do drum tracks for them. It's oh, cool. sweet. So you're you're yeah. like a musician. I mean, a musician. You're actually a studio musician as well. I didn't mean a musician. Sorry. Yeah. Well, most of them are kind of like trivium fans you know yeah <laughs> right right yeah we um, play drums on my track and then they send you the track over and you and you cut the drums to it yeah nice. and uh, i also i also got a, a nirvana i don't know if I, you can just leave this out the interview that'd be fine i got yeah. a nirvana tribute that goes around you do like fly in weekend stuff cool so yeah we've been to alaska like three times it's pretty funny really <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's crazy, it's crazy, dude. Crazy. They fly to Alaska. Yeah, well, this promoter that uh, I got friends with uh, was a huge Nirvana fan, so she hired us like three times. Cool, that's so, pretty wild. Yeah. That yeah. is cool. And are you fronting that band as well? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's it's, really uh, cool. That's what's kind of helped. Uh, I think my overall songwriting and in, in, in stage show because i got experience i've been doing it for the past five years i was doing while i was doing while i was in trivium man oh you were doing the side project while you were in trivium yeah it's called smells like nirvana <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> nice uh, yeah and uh yeah man it's kind of like giving me the the tenacity to like to like maybe i could do this you know so cool awesome now i want to yeah. hear uh, it even more <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Uh, it's going to be right up your alley, Chris, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Chris, you have anything else? I don't, man. I really appreciate you taking the time, and, and uh, I can't wait to hear the tunes, man. Really All right, appreciate thank you, it. Good luck with the tour, and good luck with the record, and we'll speak with you soon, man. Hopefully, All we'll right, see you in the Take Virginia care. area soon. Yeah, sounds great. All right. All right. Bye. See you, man. Bye. Bye.